Hey guys, I'm Mark with the Plugin Genius, and today I'm going to be showing you how to instance an AdMix prefab during app runtime with dynamic in play banner ads. Great if you're making an endless runner or roguelike. So let's go. So, the first thing you want to do is prepare a prefab level that will be using in play ads that will be instanced. So, I'm going to be using this small Toon City the same that we used in our previous tutorial. Remember in that previous tutorial I used AdMix dynamic placements as dynamic placements can only be used as prefabs. So the first thing you want to do is make a empty game object within the hierarchy and call it small city or whatever you want. So I'm gonna go to hierarchy, I'm gonna go create empty and I'm gonna call it small city. There we go. So the next thing you want to do is select all of the assets within your scene and drag and drop that into the empty game object which you just called small city or whatever you called it and then drag and drop that into that. So we're going to select from here, we're going to hold shift and we're going to scroll all the way down until we have all of the assets and we're going to drag and drop that into the new empty game object called small city. Drag that, drag that into there. So now everything has been uh, is now a child under the empty game object small city so once we close that in the hierarchy everything should be under one game object so from our last tutorial we created a prefab folder so what we want to do now is make this small city a prefab so if we go and find our prefab folder from our assets so we click assets and then we go all the way over to our prefabs folder and in there we have our prefab. Now what we want to do is select the small city uh, object from the hierarchy and drag and drop that into our prefabs folder. And now this whole city which we've created is a full prefab. So the next thing we want to do is drag and drop that small city back into your scene. So going to drag and drop this back into here just like that and then what we want to do is drag it all the way down so it's at the end of the street so let's move this now so it goes all the way down to the end of the road keep going all the way down keep going all the way down there we go and now those two streets have been connected perfectly. Once you're happy with where you've placed the end of the road, we now need to rename the city to small city two or whatever you named yours. So I'm gonna go to mine and I'm gonna select small city and I'm gonna rename it small city two. Now we have to drag and drop that small city two it back into the prefabs folder so now we will have two prefabs of the city we're going to go to our hierarchy select small city 2 and drag and drop that into your prefabs folder just like so and it's going to come up with a pop-up asking you if you want to create it as an original prefab so you just select yes and now you have two prefabs of the small city this will be instanced further down the line. So what you have to do now is make sure you delete the small city 2 prefab from the scene. I want to go to my hierarchy. I want to select small city 2 and I'm going to hit delete. So it's no longer there. So the next thing you want to do is create a 3D object and place it at the end of the level. We're going to go into um, game object, 3D object and cube. And once that's placed, we drag and drop it closer to the scene. So drag it up here. I'm just going to enlarge mine. So enlarge it along this way. And enlarge it up. Just like so. And I'm going to place mine just about here. This is going to act as a collision detector for the master controller trigger. So what you have to do for this game object is turn off the mesh renderer. You want to then go down to add component and you want to add a rigid body. 
and then with this rigid body you want to make sure that is kinetic is turned on and use gravity is turned off i'm going to rename this cube next as this is what will load the next game chunk i want to go over to my hierarchy i'm going to select the game object and i'm going to call it next make sure you're happy with the size of the box within your scene this invisible box will spawn the small city 2 prefab when another box collides with it so let's go ahead and create that box so we're going to go to game object we're going to go to 3d object and we're going to select cube and what we want to do now is we're going to bring that up so it's closer to the player so what we want to do for this box is turn off the mesh renderer and we want to go down to the box collider and make sure that is tri trigger is turned on so we want to make sure that this box collider is just up, just above and a little bit ahead of the player or camera and then we want to drag and drop the trigger box into our main camera or player and in our instance we're going to be dragging it into the player i'm going to go to my hierarchy select the trigger box and drag and drop it into our first person character controller so as this object's job is to collide and trigger with objects we have to give it some code so let's create a small script so we can add it to the box collider so what we have to do now is create a new folder called scripts so let's go to our, our assets click right click go up to create new folder and let's name this scripts and then we want to open that folder right click and let's create a new script so we're going to go to create c sharp and we're going to name this script new scene as a placeholder but you can name it wherever you like now i want to open up the script so we can edit it so everything from line 7 to 16 we don't need so let's go and select everything from here all the way up to here and delete so this little code snippet sets the trigger to false so it's ready to detect a collision then it listens out for the collision when the collision happens it instantiates the next part of our map our small city prefab and sets the trigger to true so it doesn't spawn the prefab over and over again if you want to find this code snippet i will leave a link in the description in our docs where you can go and take that code and use it for your own scene so now what we want to do is drag and drop the new script that we just created onto the camera or character so we're going to go into our assets where our script is we're going to drag and drop this into our first person character controller so once you've attached the script to the character controller or camera you will scroll down where you find our new scene script and you will have an empty section next to the city prefabs with admix banners what we want to do now is drag and drop our small city 2 into that empty section so we're going to go back to our, our assets we're going to find our prefabs and we're going to drag and drop our small city 2 into that empty section let's find our script again i'm going to drag and drop this just here now all you have to do is hit play and once your character reaches the end of the level your small city 2 prefab should instance instantly and all of our dynamic banner ads should load load up and as you walk towards the end of the scene one nice one there one one on the wall over there another one on the side of the wall there and if you noticed our small city 2 prefab loaded as it reached the end of the street the banners are showing our ads here placeholder for now because we are currently running in sandbox mode once you go live they will generate and show actual advertisements and generate you revenue and there you have it a simple way to load a prefab during runtime using in-play dynamic banners within your game feel free to use this approach for any other algorithm you use for your genre thank you guys so much for watching this quick tutorial be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and i'll catch you guys very very soon so wait